you are in time and space. Chuck Giants documenting the human experience. Woo, just got back from Albuquerque. Hello, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Got uh, dropped off the last puppy. So it's just me and my dogs, huh? After two months. Uh, got me some coffee here. And we're going to talk about um, a photograph and the person in the photograph. And uh, answer any photography questions, documentary photography questions. There's such things as that. Be sure to head over to chuckjines.com. Sign up for my email subscription. Woo! All right. <clears throat> I had to schedule this, uh, reschedule it once because the lady's flight was coming in at a different time. So sorry about the uh, time delay. Daryl, how you doing today, man? Good to see you. Let me get my glasses on here so I can actually see. <clears throat> Mike, how you doing, man? All right, now I can see what what's going on here. All right, we got a few people here. Let me get a sip of coffee. Woo! Albuquerque's a long ride, ain't it? Oh, but it's good to get rid of all those puppies. <laughs> okay, so once again, the photograph that we're going to be looking at today, uh, this is a film photograph. And um, back in the time, I think this was an F2 that I shot this photograph, but it was with the same... Nikkor 24 millimeter lens. Like I say all the time, there's been a lot of people that have uh, since passed away <laughs> whose souls have passed through this lens. And uh, this is another story of this. New Orleans is probably, well, not probably, it's one of my favorite places to visit in the United States. I really enjoy the French Quarter a great deal. There's no other place like it. Asheville is sterile. Santa Fe is sterile. Those are like outside shopping malls for rich white people. <laughs> Whereas New Orleans actually has a whole shitload of culture and uh, just a, a wonderful place. Uh, um, I, I hope to go there again, maybe this October. Okay, so Appy, quit it. The dog is acting up. When you know it, when you know it. Well, we'll just have to deal with that. So the name of this photograph is called De Death Mask. And um, this is Lisa Dreskel, otherwise known as Washboard Lisa. She's a pretty famous, or she was a very famous busker musician in the French Quarter for a long, long time. And she was a master of old Delta blues type music from the 20s, you know, around the turn of the century, maybe through the 1930s. When she was a younger lady, she had just an incredible, incredible voice and uh, made her living on the streets uh, of New Orleans in the French Quarter, uh, playing playing guitar and later washboard. But the reason it's called Death Mask is because uh, at this time she's got throat cancer, so she's uh, going under treatment. And up here next to the clock is the mask they would have her wear when she would go in for her uh, radiation treatment. And uh, so I put it there. What's, what's also funny is that clock was always at uh, five minutes or seven minutes after eight. <laughs> it wasn't really set. Um, kind of a real, this is voodoo kitchen is what I, what I call this. I actually lived in Lisa's house for a couple months um, while she was away. And uh, her and her boyfriend, Johnny Two Time, um, just pretty much let me have free reign uh, photographing. I got a lot of photographs of her boyfriend taking a bath and snorting cocaine and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. So this was like a little mini uh, documentary project that I called Voodoo Kitchen. Um, just a kind of an eccentric. She, she's been dead for several years now, but um, real interesting photograph, real nice guitar. I love the... Uh, the textures and the patterns in her in her dress right there that really captures the eye and almost it almost pulls you in and again this is a triax photograph taken with a nikon f and my trusty 24 millimeter ais nikon nikkor lens um there's another shot this is just a candid again this is film as well and this is just uh, the sunlight was coming through the <clears throat> through the window towards uh, uh, this is in, in the evening and it was just shining off of her face and I just happened to snap that. There's no flash on that at all. It's all natural lighting. Um, 
but a pretty nice little snapshot. You can tell I'm kind of, I'm probably at uh, 2.8 on this, to, judging by the, how out of focus everything is in the background. Here. This is a, a smaller print of Lisa and her boyfriend. That's Johnny two time. This is Lisa making uh, some sort of pie, if I remember correctly. She used to love to cook. And uh, this is another photo of the same, same, same evening, same shoot. Lisa playing her guitar. And then one more. I have other ones. These are the only ones I have prints of, though. And uh, that's Lisa Dreskel, or was Lisa Dreskel. Pretty well known in the French Quarter. Um, like I said, uh, there isn't a whole lot of, she never really made a CD, which is kind of a shame. Um, a lot of the buskers make a CD. And uh, she kind of lost her voice there uh, in the last few years. So uh, there, there's, I've heard one recording of her when she was, uh, when she was younger. Go on, Happy, go lay down. Oh, let's see what you guys got to say here. How you doing? How you doing? Any questions, comments about this photograph, about this lady, about the project? It wasn't a really extensive project necessarily, just um, her kitchen was pretty unique. Let me see what else I got here as far as Voodoo Kitchen. Just interesting things that she had. Like I said, she was kind of eccentric. Let me see what I got here. Just some of the things in the in the kitchen. Tennis racket with some whiskey. <laughs> this is a shot of Preservation Hall down in the quarter. I don't know why I put an X through this. This is Johnny two time late at night. What are you doing, Luna? How are you? Ooh. That's St. Cinder. What? What do you want? What? No, go lay down. I'm looking at... Uh, we'll, we'll do a different one on that one. That's a pretty good photo. Okay, yeah, here's another one with just an interesting array of things on the window. The windowsill. Kind of, I guess you could say, a <laughs> pretty sloppy person. Um... There's Johnny two-time playing his uh, gas tank bass, flipping people off. He's got a real sore finger from playing the bass. This is the first time I met them. And uh, they said I, uh, I reminded them of Dennis Hopper in Apocalypse Now with the, uh, with, the, with the Nikon cameras, film cameras around my neck, and I usually wear a bandana. But this is when I first met him. And uh, I remember Johnny said, fuck you. And I said, fuck you, too. And he said, come on over for shrimp. <laughs> so I ended up uh, uh, going down there two or three years in a row. Hold on a second. Let me get these dogs out of here. Come on, you guys. I can't listen to that. I'm doing a live stream. Come here, Luna. Luna. Outside. Oh, All right. Sorry about that. She's a little rambunctious. We'll go through some of these. These are different, but different people from the French Quarter. But um, yeah, that's an interesting, uh, interesting photo of Johnny Two Time there. This is in October. Um, I love New Orleans in October. I think it's my favorite time. It's not real ungodly hot, and um, it's not overcrowded. I hate Mardi Gras. I don't like big crowds of people. Um, this is around Voodoo Fest. That's my favorite time to go to New Orleans. Um, it's just perfect. There's the right amount of people, uh, doesn't get blazing, blazing hot. I first went to New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina, uh, on a roofing project. <clears throat> I actually uh, put the slate. Oh, I got a piece of slate right there off the old St. Louis cathedral. And, uh, I was on a, on a roofing crew for that. That's how I got introduced to it. Uh, very nice dock work. Thank you, sir. How is Bertha doing? That's, we're not talking about my motorcycle today, man. This is about photography. <clears throat> How was it working in New Orleans compared to Chicago? Oh, it's a lot different. I mean, it's a total different, uh, it's a total different feel. It's a total different culture. Um, 
the, the French Quarter isn't as dangerous <laughs> as as the ghettos of Chicago. Um, what do you want? Go on, you guys. But um, yeah, it's a total different experience. Total difference. No questions. Just want to thank you for your work. Thank you, man. Real, real talk about real people and aspects of life. Yeah, I try to get in there. Love the grit. Yeah, I used to call it Grit Street. My my kind of style. Uh, stand developments is uh, <clears throat> one of the develop developing methods with Rodinal, and uh, tends to bring out a lot of grain in, into the imagery. But uh, I love New Orleans, man. Um, if I was a wealthy man, I'd keep a place down there. I, I actually would. It's just a real good place if you're an abnormal per person. You you fit right in there, and um, it's just uh, it's there's more culture there than anywhere else that I know of. It's just a really unique place. Have you any prints uh, from 620 film? No, <clears throat> I'm mostly a 35 millimeter triax shooter. I shot some medium format, but not a lot. Nope. I don't even know what 620 film is. Are you going to be going over lighting and things? What do you mean? <clears throat> I mean, I can. <laughs> I love working with natural light. This this kind of reminds me the same kind of setup of that uh, one photograph of I have of that heroin addict who's going through withdrawal on Lower Wacker Drive. Kind of the same thing. Um, again, no flash. Um, I'm under, I'm under exposing here to really bring out the, 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 the shadow areas to really make, make her face pop. Um, there's no flash on that. That's just all hundred percent natural lighting. I really like this photo. Johnny said he really captured her there. She actually died in that house of throat cancer. A pretty interesting lady, man. What do you what do you want to know about lighting? <clears throat> I mean, I I do use flash. I have used flash, um, but I prefer working with natural uh, lighting. That's 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 my favorite thing. I do have some flash work. I can show you a flash photo here. Uh. Let me show you the, uh, where's the other one of that? Oh, this is kind of interesting. This is just a, a corner of the house where Johnny Two-Time had his, uh, his painting easel. I got a whole bunch of stuff on their house. I mean, it was just a real interesting, uh, that St. Cinder. Oh, okay, here we go. This is, this is a flash photo. This is on, this is called Eruption. I actually, I want to do a whole little different thing on this photo, but, uh, I do use flash, but I really enjoy natural lighting if I can. <clears throat> I was going to ask natural, do you prefer outside to inside? Doesn't matter. <clears throat> Haven't heard from you in a while. Hope everything is going. Yeah, man, life is really good right now. So outside then. No, I, it doesn't matter to me, inside, outside. <laughs> One of the challenging things was, I remember uh, when John Free, um, I actually built his website and got him started in his, uh, his workshops. He came to Chicago, and one of the things I wanted was some advice on how to shoot down on Lower Wacker Drive. I was shooting with film uh, without using flash, and I uh, took him down there, and he was just like, you can't, you can't photograph down here. So <laughs> that wasn't the answer I was looking for. I have to photograph down there, but... Um, so I, I, I learned how to use natural lighting whenever whenever I could and, and really pay attention to the moments uh, where, the, where there is, the, the lighting is just right, you know. But it can, it can be difficult inside for sure. It can be difficult outside too, but uh, definitely lighting is, a, is an issue with film when you're not using uh, flash. I mean, you can't turn up your ISO like you can on a digital can or camera up to 6400, you know what I'm saying? Um, I would shoot tri -X at 800 or 1600. I'd push it. Um, but again, this is, this is, uh, I got a little thing where I say, if my camera lens could speak, it would tell you things you wouldn't want to hear. Um, this lens here is seen a lot of work, man, seen a lot of work. And like I said, there's a lot of, a lot of people who are now dead, their souls passed through this glass. And, uh, so it's a very special, very special lens to me.
And uh, like I said, if my camera lens could speak, it would tell you things you would not want to hear. You prefer outside or inside? Yeah, it doesn't matter, man. Doesn't matter to me, really. You know, I just, I like to photograph. I like to photograph documentary work. I don't like to, to uh, you know, there has to be a story behind it in some way. I, I tried getting into landscape photography and um, not really interested in it. <laughs> There has to be people. There has to be a story to it. And uh, I take a lot of pics, but not like you. Good stuff, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I don't I do not do too much anymore. Um, I'm waiting from... Uh, I just ordered... Not just ordered. It should be in this week. Uh, a, a new to me, a Pentax MX. I really fell in love with this camera. I got that one at a flea market for like five bucks. We be leaving this up. I'm driving. Yeah, I, there's no reason for me to pull these. We're not talking politics. We're talking photography. So there's no reason for me to. Um, I'm, I do have a members area over on ChuckGines.com where I talk about uh, a lot of controversial political uh, uh, issues that you normally can't talk about on YouTube due to the cancel culture. Um, I have a bunch of stuff from Ferguson too um, that I'm. Someday I'll put the book together called White Man Made Me Do It. Um, not just Ferguson, but uh, uh, m mostly Ferguson, but that whole thing where the racial stuff really started to get stirred up in this country. And um, we'll see if Blurb will let me keep it up because it, it's not it's not the standard narrative. But uh, <laughs> And I meant making that post way back when out of ignorance interested in the story. What post? I don't know what you're talking about, Joe. Yeah, there's got to be a story or I'm not interested in photographing it, really. I do like photographing my dogs. Um, that that I enjoy doing. But I, I don't like landscape work. Um, I really don't like... I I, I have... A, uh, I could do a whole other book just on political protests because, man, I really took a lot of different uh, different protests... And uh, not really interested in the political stuff anymore either, or, or protests. It really got boring, um, kind of just redundant. Um, I thought about doing a, a little documentary project on rodeo, uh, but I, I don't know, man. It takes a lot of time, and I really need to back up and finish a lot of the stuff that uh, uh, <clears throat> that I've already shot. When putting together a portfolio or album, any suggestions? Yes, don't let your work stack up. <laughs> I, I wish I would have been... Uh, well, here was my mistake. Rather than posting all this stuff on Facebook, I should have been putting this stuff together as I was shooting. Here's my advice to you. stay. Do not post your work online. Take the time to edit uh, write your captions, your story and put it together in, in some sort of blurb or whatever you're going to use, um, before you start posting this stuff online, that was a huge mistake of mine. Um, and now I got mountains of, of uh, stuff that I need to put together in, into, into books and into magazines and life moves on. And, and, uh, it's like staring at a huge mountain and, um, you know, life moves on and you, you don't have time. So uh, my main advice would be don't uh, post your stuff on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, that, though, that, that's all the, that's the trash world of the soul. It really is. And, it, and it's gone. Here, let me put these dogs out. Go on, guys. Go on, look outside. You go outside, kids, with your cash and gas, which means something's about to happen. Yeah, don't don't make them. That was my biggest mistake was uh, posting all that stuff on on Facebook, and I should have been putting it together into into books right from the get go. And uh, that's that would be my biggest part of, of of advice. Is the photography world the same as the MC world? The more crap you have, the dumber you are. All the people buying more stuff. Yeah, it's it's, it's actually the same. The photography world is the top 20% income earners, and a lot of the, the biker world, the Harley world today, is its top 20% Gen mm -hmm. X, um, early Gen X, uh, baby boomers. It, it's actually one of the same people, and uh, 
the thing I noticed about the photography world, it's almost like a religious cult. And people go to these workshops expecting some sort of salvational moment where all of a sudden they're going to see the light and then they're going to take good photographs. Um, Postmodernism infiltrates everything. And people do have this attitude that, uh, you know, I, I bought this uh, uh, expensive electric glide, therefore I'm, and these chaps, therefore I'm a biker. Um, same thing. I, you know, I spent all this money on a camera, therefore I'm a photographer. And, um, you know, I don't play along well with that. Well, let me tell you, one of the last workshops I did, um, this lady, and she had taken the Thomas Leatherard workshop, and she took the Eric Kim workshop, and she took the John Free workshop, and she took the, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember half of these people's names, but everybody had workshops. And she came and she take my, took my workshop for two days. And uh, on the second day, I would send people out after lunch um, just to explore on their own and then come back We look when we'd look at, at their photos. And I said, okay, you took so-and-so's workshop, this workshop, that workshop. You spent two days with me. Let's see what you got. And uh, we started looking through her photos. And I said, well, you might want to take up creative writing <laughs> or something else. She was so, you know, it is what it is, man. I mean, you, you either have some talent that you can work with and develop or you don't. <laughs> um, we live in this world. John Free always had this silly postmodern saying that the only difference between you and Henry Cartier Brisson is he worked harder. Um, this this theory that there's a little Henry Cartier, Carter, Henry Cartier Brisson deep with inside each and every person just waiting to be born, you know, and uh, that's bullshit. People have talents and some people don't have talents. Um, other people have different talents than other people. And you, you can develop talents and work with the talents that you've been given. But if you don't have a talent for it, there isn't any lens out there. There isn't any camera out there. And there is no workshop out there that, you know, somehow a light is going to go off. Very few of the people that ever took my workshop actually had any uh, um, potential skill. Mo most people uh, just don't have an eye for it. It has to do with seeing. Henry Cartier Brisson was just a master of seeing uh, patterns within the natural world. And, um, you either have it or you don't have it, you know? And, uh, so yeah, there's a lot of the same there. About you not telling TGE story. I don't know what that is, man. You gotta, please speak in complete sentences. I don't, I don't, TGE story. About you not telling TGE story. I don't, I have no clue what that is, man. I'm sorry. I'm not hip and savvy to all the, the, the lingo online. I, I have no idea what TGE is. And I don't, I don't know about whatever story I didn't tell. Elaborate on that. I'll answer your question. I hate the YouTube photography world. Just trying to sell you. So, oh, all the time. They call you the turd in the punch bowl. I call you a breath of fresh air. Oh yeah. I mean, I, you know, I just call it as it is, man. You're not supposed to do, you're not supposed to criticize anybody today. Um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, everybody gets a gold star and uh, every Jack gets his Jill and turkeys fly about ready roasted. You know, that's the type of world that we live in today. I don't play well with that because uh, it's not true. <laughs> it's not how the world is. And, um, you know, there was a lot of good people in, in the workshops. But uh, um, like I said, there was very few people that came through the workshops that actually had some talent that would be worth worth developing. Um you know, I also, I, I don't know, I never considered photography an art. It's it's not really an art. It's a capture of the pre-given reality. Um, there's more waiting <laughs> and waiting for right moments than creating. And um, I, I never said that photography wasn't fun, interesting, important. <laughs> it's just not an, it's not, it's not, it's not formally or, or uh, art proper. It's, it's, and people would get, John Free. John Free would always say that uh, photography is the highest art, right? And which, of course, that makes him the highest form of artist, right? Ah! <laughs> Funny shit, man. But yeah, I mean, media, photo the photography world will wear you out. It, it's, a, it's a celebration of mediocrity. Um, and it's also about who you know. Um, you know, 
it's just it's just amazing how cl- clicky. Well, I think the whole art world is like that, um, but definitely photography. It's all about who you're, who's in, who's out. Uh, you know, and it's not about the work. There, there's, it's always been like that. If you look at like Joel Meyerowitz, we shouldn't know that dude's name. That dude's photography is like so unremarkable. Um, Dion Arbus, there's another one. You know, I don't know why. Well, ethnicity. <laughs> I think it was. Um, um, Gary Winogrand wrote an essay once saying that uh, if one wanted to be a, a street photographer, it's best first to be Jewish. <laughs> and there's there's a lot of truth to that. Um, there's a, there was a lot of real mediocre work that was just celebrated unnecessarily. Then you have someone like Gordon Parks, right? Gordon Parks had more talent in 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 his little finger than Robert Frank had in his entire body. Um, the reason we know about Gordon Parks is because of his tenacity of his will and his work, um, which was phenomenal. You know about Robert Frank because he was the right ethnicity and he had the right Marxist uh, anti-American narrative because there was there was an unremarkable guy for the most part. I mean, the Americans is a is a is a false screed uh, that doesn't accurately depict how America was back in the 1950s. It's a total lie, but it fit it fit the it fit the uh, the uh, the leftist agenda. <laughs> the story behind the photo when you posted it before. I yeah, I told the story. This photo here, are you talking about this photo, Joe? The whole art world, I'd like that. I've been an artist for the music industry for 10 years plus, and it's just boring now. Everyone uses Photoshop and thinks they are, yeah, good good at art. I know, dude, it's, it's you know, uh, I have people get mad because I don't crop photos. Any of my, none of my photos are cropped. Um, and people go out, they do spray and pray, and then they take it back in and, you know, clip out this little section. It just seems like such cheating to me. <laughs> None of my photos are cropped, man. I don't, I don't crop my photos. I, I just, you know, you see it, you frame it right. You, you go with the natural things that are, you know, the leading lines, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, you, you did in the light and you just go for it. And, uh, there's no reason to be cropping and all that other kind of stuff. You know, you know, look at, uh, who do we have? The angry photographer. Who's the, the art of photography? Who's that guy? I mean, absolutely <laughs> no photographs. I mean, no skill. Ted Forbes. Oh my God. What a, what a what a terrible photographer. I mean, like really bad. He might be really passionate for photography, but that guy just couldn't take a photo to save his life. Um, angry photographer, great on gear, you know, um, but actually, uh, was taking other people's photos and pawning them off as his own. Cause the guy can't take, like I said, if you don't have a talent for it, you don't have a talent for it. I've always liked Frono's photo. Um, I actually still, I'll, I'll watch Fro every once in a while, just for the entertainment value. I'm not interested in the latest gear or anything, but I really admired a business that he built, um, I was there back when he had the Kermit of Frog, uh, the start of his whole thing. And he's actually a halfway decent photographer, um, unlike many of the, the very popular photography channels. You know, I don't, Matt Day is not a very good photographer. He's a nice guy, um, but he's not a, he's not a good photographer. Eric Kim, what a joke that was, you know. So there was a lot of like celebration of mediocrity within the, within the photography community that I just, I really didn't didn't have much time or stomach for, you know. What about Tony Northrup? No, he's not a good photographer. <laughs> no. Um, I would say Daniel Milner is a halfway decent photographer. Um, and I'll tell you what, Daniel Milner, uh, far more than a, uh, a photographer is a writer. I've told him that. Um, he won't have coffee with me. I'm too right wing for him. <laughs> he lives just right up here. We talk on chat every once in a while, but um, um, yeah, what a great writer. He is just an incredible gifted writer, uh, more so than even a photographer, but he's a halfway decent photographer too. 
Um, but I mean, you can count on one hand, the actual decent photographers out there within the YouTube, uh, sphere of photography. You literally can. Um, most of them are just not good. No, Tony, Tony Northrup's not a photographer at all. <laughs> and my, I don't know nothing. There's no work that stands. I mean, half the people that were doing the street photography workshops were not good photographers. I don't know what they're doing now. Um, but, uh, and I, and I'd say that so people would get pissed at me, but it is what it is. You know, it would be like, you know, uh, if it was a guitar community and these people are shitty guitar players and they're shitty guitar players, you know, why are they giving for, why are they giving guitar lessons when they don't know three chords? You know, you can get away with a lot more within the photography world than you can, uh, a lot of these, a lot of these other worlds. But, um, I love documentary work cause you know, you get to you get to meet these people and actually um, get into their get into their lives and then you know like I said so many of the people that I photograph have passed away and uh, it adds something it adds something to the photos I think you know to the story because they're they're not here anymore um, they were here and now they're no longer I want to do Lisa justice there's not a there's not a whole lot on Lisa. Um, so when I do, uh, my, whatever, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do on my new Orleans. I got a lot of new Orleans photographs, a lot, um, enough to do several, several books. And that's why I was thinking of doing just, you know, a voodoo kitchen, um, of, of Lisa's house of Lisa. Uh, <laughs> I took some photos of the inside of the refrigerator. Oh my God. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. Oh man, she was kind of sloppy. So I'm gonna she where was she? Oh, her mom was dying of cancer, so she was going uh, to Washington State to spend. I think it was three months. It might have been longer than that. I stayed down there a long time. So they wanted someone to stay at the house with her and Johnny and, and pay the other half of the rent. And I was like, oh, okay, I can do that. And um, <laughs> so the first night, man. I pull the, the bed uh, uh, cover over and there's fre there's fresh menstrual cycle blood all over the sheets, man. That was Lisa. <laughs> that was Lisa. Huh? Oh man. See, now those are great stories, you know? <laughs> oh, that, that refrigerator was something. She was a good cook, you know, but you had to be, you had to be daring to eat <laughs> out of her kitchen. You know, but uh, like I said, just a, a, a master of the old Delta Blues. Um, you know, I don't even think there's anybody like her around anymore. You know, she's she was the last last of her kind when it when it comes to that old Delta Blues music. And she had she had a voice of an angel back when she was younger. <clears throat> and then Johnny, Johnny two time. <laughs> I love New Orleans, man. Hope to get there soon. <clears throat> All right, you're back now. Cool. So what do you guys think about documentary work? You guys got any projects going on or anything like that? I want to do a little series about more of my photos, you know, photo talk. I want, I want to talk about these photos and more so to expose the people, you know, to let you know that the, they actually lived. Um, this is a little book I got for sale. It's called Commuter Rail. It's uh, there's some pretty cool shots in here, and this is all out of the metro window. Um, probably over five years worth of time. That's an interesting shot. But this is available on Blurb, and then the last photo on the page there. <clears throat> this is available on Blurb, and it's also Amazon. If you go to ChuckGines.com. Um, oh yeah, I was liking shooting out that round port window, but it's just, uh, a collection of photographs over the years, just looking out the, uh, not all of it's, uh, the Metro. This is the blue line a shot of the skyline there, but so you can get this book over on my website on blurb. That's kind of cool. The five bri bridges. There's Teddy. Teddy made his way in. Everybody exhausted. Huh? Worn out. 
Now that would have been an interesting project. There's another, that house is tore down now. That's the other cool thing about a lot of this stuff. You know, life goes on and changes and that stuff isn't around. Oh, that's an interesting photo. I got a large print of that. Uh, this was on the, this was on the red line, this one here. And uh, this kid was daydreaming. Again, that's with this 28 millimeter lens. I think it was Nikon F2. And I was sitting across from that kid and he was just kind of staring and I just went, and he never even flinched or moved. But uh, Commuter Rail, that's a little book I have for sale. Um, like I said, you could buy it off a of blurb. You go to my website, chuckjines.com, you'll see uh, uh, links to, to get to this if you want. And it's also available on Amazon <clears throat> as well. Did you take those photos, Commuter Rail, on your way to the attics? Yeah. That's me going downtown, not just the attics, uh, the alley boys, all, the homeless. Any Anytime I was going downtown, that's uh, I took advantage of shooting out the window. And that that's what that book is. But I, like I said, man, I, that was a really good question about advice. And, man, do not, you know, keep up on your work. I could have, I ain't kidding, man, I could have a dozen little books like this pretty easily. Um not easily. It's, it's actually a lot of work to put this stuff together. Um, see, I bet that ain't there no more either. So some, some of it's, uh, the actual, uh, transit authority. Oh, that's a cool shot. <laughs> I like doing the layout too. You know, there's another, another cool shot. Pretty neat little book, man pretty neat little blurb is kind of expensive but you know so yeah keep your work together don't let it stack up don't don't post it all on instagram it's a ghetto world of the soul man it really is don't that was a huge mistake of mine you know i should i should have made this stuff into the books as or magazines whatever the case may be as i was going along um just a, a huge mistake like I said, now I sit here with, you know, piles of photographs. I feel like Eugene Smith, <laughs> piles of photographs and uh, like his uh, Pittsburgh project, you know, it collapses under its own weight. So keep up on your stuff, man, you know, get it in, get it into print. You know, I got a lot of prints and everything, but, you know, I should have more, you know, it's more than just a book of prints when you're doing something like this, you know, because you want to tell the story of the people. So the writing is involved as well. <clears throat> thank you man man after watching your videos and hearing your stories for years now you really have done so much with your life most people never do half of what you it's been interesting <laughs> it's been a long strange trip ain't it and here i thought i was dying and uh, who knows what in the hell that was but uh got that straightened out it looks like for my sins i'm gonna live a little longer what do you think about pick on phone and then printed it don't matter to me, man, whatever you shoot with, you know, um, there's a lot of things you can't do with a phone. You know, um, I'm, I'm a camera guy. It's really hard to get, uh, you know, just the different lenses. This and the 135 uh, AIS are, are my two primary lenses. And um, it's really hard to simulate those, those with a phone. Um, you know, the phone is, uh, well, a lot of the digital cameras, too, with the lag, I like instant. When I when I push that, I want the shutter to go. Um, but, I mean, if you, if you can do it, you can do it. But, I, you know, it's, it's hard to beat a camera, you know. The, the phones are cool, but, uh, you know. But as far as, like, uh, oh, I got a print somewhere. I don't know where it's at. Of me on my Harley with the Luna sitting by the side of the motorcycle. Um, you can make big old prints with them now. I mean, it's 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 really amazing how qual how how good the prints can be if that's what you mean. You know. Yeah, I don't have any digital cameras now except for my phone. I just uh, like I said, I just bought a new one, well, new to me anyway. Uh, Pentax MX. This one, the light meter is broken, but uh, it, I was hoping it would be here yesterday. Um, I got one in like mint condition with a forty millimeter pancake lens. Um, this one's got a 50 millimeter lens on it. 
But I just I just fell in love. I don't know what it is. It's so nice and tiny. It just feels really good. Now now the FM feels big <laughs> after holding that Pentax. Um, the other thing with these, I'd like to buy another FM, but um, the seri- they don't post the serial numbers. You need one that starts with a two because the thing I hate about these damn things, um, most of them you got to have this like in that position or else it won't fire. And I, I hate that. I just can't stand it. It's like always having a safety on the trigger in a war zone, you know, something that gets in your damn way. And, uh, I don't like having restrictions to me firing off that shutter. So a lot of times when you go on, on eBay and all that to buy, buy these, they don't give you the serial numbers. Um, because, uh, the ones that start with two, uh, you don't have to do that. It fires in, in the without the without the light meter being turned on. I don't know why they did that. If not on my phone, I use a Canon digital. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'm not anti digital. I, I a lot of my work is digital. I just I like film. I like I like uh, you know focusing more on the shadows than the highlights. Um, of course, I like the look of film. Um, but, you know, again, you know, when it comes to, like, working at night and stuff like that, you, you can't even contend. Or, like, here's the other thing. With photojournalism, you can't shoot film. The, the world is moving way too fast. Uh, and that's why, why I like documentary work, too, because there isn't, there isn't that time res- restraint. Um, you really need a digital camera if you're going to do any type of photojournalism st- type stuff um, just to stay up with the times. But... Uh, yeah, I, I like I like the old, you know, I've always been a manual focus. Do all my stuff is manual focus, even my MMA photography. Um see I could do a little book on MMA. I I got uh, some halfway decent stuff. I think I got something here. I thought I did. I thought I did. Yeah, I got something here. I think I got one shot. This Antarama was there was a lot of pink in uh, these prints. I don't know why. Like, they don't have a quality control here, like Teddy here. Look at that. Why would you send that out? <laughs> like, that's acceptable, you know. Yeah, here's here's St. Cinder at the time again with the that big pink spot. Oh, here you go. Here's a pretty good MMA shot. Now this was with the Nikon D seven hundred, but with the uh, uh, the old film lenses like I use. Quite challenging. Why I got out of MMA photography was um, I realized the equipment that you need. I I seen somebody's photograph that was you know the sweat coming off the guy when he was hit was like tack sharp, and I just was like wow that's incredible equipment. <laughs> to be able to to get that was really uh, qu- not not taking away from the photographer but i'm saying you really need specific equipment specific lens specific iso capabilities in order to nail something like that you just you couldn't do it with what i had and uh i, I really didn't want to invest um you prefer the non-digital could you explain yeah it's just uh I don't like big bulky digital cameras. I, I like these little little cameras. Um, I grew up with film. I'm just used to film. Um, you know, the affordability. You know, I just you get these lenses and all that digital stuff is so expensive. You know, it's kind of a a rich man's kind of hobby. <laughs> you know, it's really expensive. And, uh, so this is poor man, you know, um, and then I like the look of film. Um, you can, I can still tell the difference between a digital photograph and a film photograph. Even if it's, even if it's a film photograph that's been scanned, you can still tell that, it, that, it, that it's film. Um, so, you know, and again, I, I just, I, I'm used to paying attention to the shadows, metering off the shadows and not worrying about my highlights, which digital is the opposite. So I'm just a creature of habit. This this is a lot more affordable, um, especially if you develop your own black and white film. Um, nowadays, the film's really expensive. I can't believe how much it's gone up. Um, but uh, yeah, that's why I like film. 
you know, the slower process. How is it going late to party? Just got off work. Oh, we were telling the story of Lisa Dreskel and Voodoo Kitchen and some of my work in New Orleans and uh, talking about digital cameras and film cameras and things about photography, the photography world that, and stuff like that. I, I'm going to do a little series here where we take a look at some of my photos and tell a little story. Yesterday we did one on uh, Tony Abernathy, um, Alley Preacher, and today, today we're talking about uh, uh, the name of the photo is death mask because of the death mask on the wall. Like I said, she was going through uh, radiation. I believe it was radiation therapy at the time. And she hung her mask. There it is next to the clock with the shadow. That was the mask that uh, when she went in for her radiation therapy. And again, the clock, the, her, that clock was like that for years, man. <laughs> it was never set, uh huh. But uh, what do you, what a unique lady, and just a, you know, just a, a real hodgepodge. It was a photographer's dream being in her kitchen. You know, it's just such a collection and arrangement of items. Um, just, just a wild, wild lady, wild lady, and like I said, she is since passed on. <clears throat> Here's a, th these are all film photographs. Most of the stuff I did at her house is film. I actually was developing in her kitchen as I was going along, but that's a pretty nice shot of Lisa with the natural lighting. But uh, there's another one with that old Gretchen guitar. But she was she was a blues lady, no doubt about it, man. She kept that old old. She knew so many old songs, man. You know, it's it's a shame there isn't more. Uh, more uh, recordings of her. Unfortunately, it's been 40 years since I developed film in junior high. Oh, it's not that hard, man. It's pretty simple. Black and white, anyway. It's pretty simple. What What's a pain in the ass with it is scanning it. <laughs> That's what's time-consuming. I got sick of scanning. Developing is easy. Um, you know, I... Uh, uh, overexpose and underdevelop a lot too much 420 ah i quit i haven't smoked in about a year i i don't I haven't drank any alcohol <clears throat> i haven't smoked I feel pretty good feel pretty good as a matter of fact uh last time i was at the doctor they couldn't even pick up any copd supposedly copd i thought was like this permanent disease that you get <laughs> well guess what <laughs> Do you also process the negatives? What do you mean, process the negatives? I don't know what you mean. Print them? Is that what you mean by process the negatives? I'm not up on all the photography lingo. I just do it. <laughs> I mean, I've made my own prints, but normally I, I scan and... Uh, um, I'll, I'll send it off somewhere f f for prints. Although I'm wanting to invest in my own printer as well. A dedicated black and white. I've been looking, I've been looking into it to get in a whole new setup, a, a new scanner and a black and white printer. That way I can just print my own stuff right here. But uh, isn't there a process before you can develop? No, you just shoot it and then you develop it. process before you can develop yeah you got to take the photo <laughs> you, you take the photo and then then you develop it and then uh you, you print it either a wet print or uh, uh you could have it digitally printed today well you got to scan it if you're going to do that if you're going to digitally print it then you have to scan it and uh, that's what takes a lot of time and a lot of the scanners are real junk they still ain't figured out a, a nice holder that holds the damn negative flat you know the, the, all this money for the for the epson scanner and they send you this cheap ass plastic uh deal that doesn't hold the negatives flat which was kind of aggravating but no there's no process before developing other than taking the photo but uh i love film like i said i don't own a digital camera i sold my uh what was that d800 
I sold that not too long ago and bought a real nice fishing rod. <laughs> real nice fishing rod. All right, if there's no more questions, we're going to call this a wrap. We've been on here for about 50 minutes. This is the second in my series, Photo Talk. And uh, today's photograph was Death Mask. A photograph of Lisa Dreskel, a famous busker down in New Orleans on the French Quarter. An old blues lady who since, uh, uh, God, it's probably been three years now since she passed away. But uh, that's Lisa. My health is good, man. Better than Lisa's. <laughs> Better than Lisa's. But, uh, yeah, I love this photo a lot. Look look for a book at some point. Probably just a voodoo kitchen. All right, everybody. Again, head over to chuckjines.com and sign up for the email subscription. And you can also buy my magazines and books over there. Everybody have an awesome day.